So morning, everybody. My name is Adam. And today I'm going to be talking to you about my project regarding Alzheimer's disease and how it affects memory in this new animal model for the disease. So we're all somewhat familiar with Alzheimer's and it's becoming increasingly common, especially in countries like the United States where life expectancies are only increasing. And as you can see in this graph, over between the year 2000 and 2015, the death rate associated with Alzheimer's nearly doubled. And currently it's standing as the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. So what makes this disease so deadly and why is it so tightly correlated with age? Oopsies. Oh wait, sorry. <laughs> well to start, it's a progressive neurodegenerative disorder, meaning that over time it leads to more and more death of the central nervous system. And at the moment there isn't a cure or really a treatment to effectively slow this, de this degeneration. Um, so being a progressive disease, the symptoms associated with the disease are also progressive. They start mild, over time they get moderate, and then eventually severe. And common symptoms associated with, the, with Alzheimer's are things like they start out with depression, irritability, mood swings, paranoia, and maybe its most famous and most common um, symptom, memory deficits and cognitive dysfunction. And as you can see from this graph, in Alzheimer's patients who are in pink, cognitive dysfunction is exponentially accelerated in AD populations when compared to individuals, individuals with mild cognitive impairment, which you can see in brown, or no cognitive impairment, which you can see in blue up top. Um, uh, sorry. <laughs> so then, once enough cortical death occurs, you start dealing with these more severe symptoms, such as seizures, seizures and like the last slide demonstrated, um, death. So what's going on under the hood to lead to this cortical atrophy? While we don't, while we don't know a ton about Alzheimer's, um, we do know some things. And the first, so the first toxic protein that we found was amyloid beta. And then we quickly after that, we found that another normally important protein for cellular structure, tau, is also modified in this disease. So it's ineffective and also toxic. So both of these toxic species, amyloid beta and tau, naturally aggregate to themselves and to form these toxic clumps. So in amyloid beta, they're known as plaques. And in the tau of tau aggregates, they're called tau tangles. Um, and when these tangles and plaques show up in the memory area of the brain, we begin to see problems with memory. So a quick briefing on how memory works. Anatomically, it's governed by a deep brain structure known as the hippocampus. And within the hippocampus, it's governed by um, a relay of neuronal connections or synapses that are incredibly plastic. And they're pliable, and they're consistently resha constantly reshaping themselves so that we can to help form these new memories. So for my project, I want to look at how these toxic species associated with Alzheimer's affect these, these synaptic um, connections in the memory um, center of the brain. So to answer this question, we need some, some type of system to test it in, whether that be cells and culture or animals such as, my, such as mice or rats. So for this study, we chose a model out of USC in Terrence Towns lab who made a rat model that expresses human genes for both tauopathy and amyloidosis. And because it's expressing these genes that are not endogenous or natural to the system, it's known as a transgenic rat. It's known as a transgenic model. So the rat was chosen in addition to being a more sturdy model than mice, which would, which would inherently allow it to age more and to progress a more significant form of AD. It also, rats also naturally express all six tau isoforms of all six isoforms of tau that humans have, whereas mice only, na only naturally express three. So, um, so this transgenic model offers the ability to see both hallmark pathologies of Alzheimer's in one system, which is new to the field and it offers a lot of prospect for translational research. So once we chose to use this model and develop the questions that we wanted to ask, we got two breeding males from Terence Towns lab. We began to breed them and create a colony and age that colony sufficiently so that it would produce the, amylo the um, Alzheimer's pathology so that we could study it. Um, so once these animals reached the ages we wanted, to t we wanted to look at, we sacked them, we took very thin slices of their brain, and then we stained them um, looking for certain synaptic proteins. Specifically, we looked at um, Specifically, we looked at the structural protein, the, the synaptic structural protein, PSD95, as well as the synaptic receptor protein, um, GLUA1. So, so receptor proteins help receive signals from the previous cell. Um, we hypothesized that both of these proteins would decrease in their expression, um, oopsies, would decrease in their expression um, as disease progresses in the animal model. So some of our data that we got 
Um, so as you can see in the left image, this is one of our stains. We use confocal microscopy, which allows you to sample, uh, which allows you to image the sample at different depths within the tissue, and then. Um, and then we kind of just smushed this all together. So we created a 2D image from a 3D landscape, which is really important because a lot of these structures that you're looking at, such as these neuronal projections that you see on the top of the stain, are, do not exist within one plane of um, do not exist within one plane of the anim of the tissue. Um, so in order to get a full picture of them, you have to look at these different layers all together as one. So in the stain, you see the cell body stained in blue, and you see the synaptic structural protein, PSD95, stained in the pink. So to analyze, the, analyze these stains, we quantify the puncta, or individual dots that you see, and we compare them within phenotype across ages, as well as between phenotypes. So we compared healthy animals to transgenic animals, as well as young transgenic animals to old transgenic animals. As you can see on the first graph, um, we saw a significant decrease in PSD95 expression, which is that structural protein in the transgenic animals compared to the wild type animals. Um, so this kind, of, this kind of leads to there probably not being as many synapses, because if you don't have a structural protein that's critical for synapses, then you'd most likely have not as many synapses. But another way that you can also test this is looking at some receptors that are typically found in synapses. So we also did that within the transgenic model. And we looked at the receptor um, GLUA1, which again is just another receptor that receives signal from the previous cell. And as you can see, there's also a significant decrease within within a, within a from young to old transgenic animals. So essentially, as the disease progress, progresses, we see a significant decrease in this receptor, again, meaning that either these synapses aren't functioning properly or they're just not there altogether. So you may have noticed that so far, we just kind of assume the pathology, the Alzheimer's pathology of this model. So to, so to, um, so to verify that, we did some additional stains. So we use the same techniques as the last slide for the pathological species of Alzheimer's. On the left, you can see this is an older transgenic displaying the phosphorylated tau, and that aggregates those tangles that I mentioned earlier. And as you can see, it actually really does like constrict the, nu the nuclei and, and the cell processes. Um, and it's just a toxic species. Um, on the right, you can see a younger transgenic animal. This is studying for the amyloid beta oligomers. Oligomers aren't quite plaques yet, but they are on their way to it. They're going to be in green. Um, it's really important because it, um, we saw early deficits in the transgenic animal. And while the, tau, while the tau tangles weren't present yet, they were present in the amyloid beta oligomers, suggesting that some of this toxicity early on is more tightly correlated with the amyloid beta. So the takeaways of the study are that we first and foremost verified this new animal. We verified verify the pathology of this new animal model for Alzheimer's. Um, allowing future studies to kind of piggyback on it and just build the um, literature surrounding this new model. And within the Alzi this new Alzheimer's framework, we also demonstrated synaptic deficits both in signaling and a decrease of synaptic receptor proteins, as well as in synaptic stability with a decrease in um, synaptic structural proteins. So in the future, we'd like to look at more ages, more ages in the study to better map disease progression, as well as look at more um, AD biomarkers um, to just further verify the pathology. I'd like to thank my PI, David Farb, and his research professor, um, Dr. Vidya Kumarasan.